going to talk about some controversies in raw foods today. One of the big controversies that, you know, Paul is, is, has come out of the closet and he's no longer raw and no longer vegan. So he has been eating some steamed vegetables and some other healthy cooked foods and also some animal products including eggs, cheese, and dairy, and some meat. And he'll tell you more about that in just a second. But, you know, he's been crucified by the people in raw foods that are vegan, the hardcore vegans, by saying, you know, you know, whatever people don't like when you go off the track. And, you know, I, I want to tell everybody that I really respect this man for standing up for what he believes in and doing it. Not that I agree with him and we're still great friends and he could eat his dairy and stuff and I'm not a big fan of that. I eat a plant-based diet here. But, you know, we're still good friends, and I really admire this man, and this is the reason why. Because he's forthright, he's upfront, he's telling people what he's doing, he's telling people he's eating cooked, he's telling people he's eating dairy and other things. And the problem is, not with Paul, the problem is with everybody else out there that are fooling themselves. There's people that, in the raw foods movement, and I know many people, I'm an educator myself, Paul's an educator himself, we know the people that teach this stuff, and I can tell you firsthand that, I don't know that I know of anybody that says they're 100% raw that are truly 100% raw according to my definition. Of course, everybody has their own definition of raw. I mean, I consider if you eat cashews out of the bulk bins at the health food store, you're not 100% raw because those cashews have been heat processed. If you eat dried fruits out of the health food store, out of the bulk bins, you're not 100% raw. In my opinion, you know, the idyllic 100% raw is, you know, living on your land, growing all your own food, you process all your own food, whether you dehydrate it or do whatever to it. But, you know, when you're starting to eat things out of packages and dried flax crackers and kale chips, I mean, how do you know that company hasn't, you know, heated it too high? Then you blew your 100% raw, so let's be realistic. I know people that make up, you know, they extend how many years they've been raw, you know? I mean, I, I document that I go back in my first 100% raw day, finished at Giuliano's Restaurant in San Francisco back in 1995. I committed to 100% raw at that point, and guess what? I fell off the wagon. I'm not perfect. I had a couple cooked food days way back then after a big breakup. You know, I had, you know, dairy products, you know, a couple times over this course to experiment to see, but I don't want to live in a stringent box, you know, that you need to break out of. It's just so toxic and detrimental to your health. So we should feel free, but we should also live with values, and this man right here has lots of values, and morals and not a lot of people in the raw foods movement in my opinion do because they say they're 100% raw and you know why do they say this Paul why do you think people say they're 100% raw <clears throat> because a lot of people they get a following and uh, they don't and they make their business behind that following and they don't want to lose that so when they realize that what they're doing isn't ideal or isn't needed to be 100% it's hard to just say, well, I'm no longer 100% because then you got to put up with all the things I'm putting up now. But I'm not doing this to gain a following. I'm doing this so people can be healthy. And, you know, cooked food is not poison. And if cooked food was as bad as some uh, raw food is say it is, none of us would be here because we all spent the majority of our life eating cooked food. Uh, there are other things I've identified that are worse than cooked food, like the raw junk food, and like overeating, like eating at the wrong times. So, you know, even at a Parkinson's Health Institute that's been... Uh, experimenting with disease in a raw food diet for over 50 years says the 100% raw vegan diet is a wonderful cleanse but uh, if you're somewhat healthy you don't need to be on a 100% raw food diet they do recommend a vegan diet but not necessarily a 100% raw diet it'll be easier emotionally and physically if somebody adds cooked food especially depending on the environment they're in because in a cold environment or a cold day uh, there's some cooked food not toxic cooked food like processed cooked food but you know, if I go somewhere cold and I'm 100% raw and I have a choice between a raw food candy bar or, you know, steamed vegetables, in the past when I was 100% raw, I, I ate that raw food candy bar because I wanted to maintain my 100% raw status. Now, when I was 100% raw, I didn't lie, I was 100% raw for about 14 or 15 years, 100% raw vegan. Did you and, eat any cashews during yeah, that time? Uh, according to me, I was 100% raw, but according to some people uh, may, like yourself, maybe not because I ate... Uh, almonds that were pasteurized and uh, maybe but they were labeled raw or so on but the bottom line is when I come to a choice between a uh, raw food however you want to define it uh, or cooked food I know in a cold environment uh, you know that steamed vegetables are a better choice than like raw food candy bars and now it's crazy because people are promoting things like raw chocolate and things like that 
again, even though they're raw and people are eating that and saying they're 100% raw, they're not healthy. You know, and of course there's other things that determine our health besides food, like our sleep, our stress levels. I travel a lot and that's not helping my, my, my health. Uh, so all of these things, uh, you know, you got to look at all of these different things. But from a diet standpoint, uh, especially because most of the food that's grown in the soil today is depleted of nutrients, uh, many people that limit to where they get their nutrients from are usually deficient. Now somebody like yourself who, does, uh, who goes to great lengths to make sure you get the majority of your food freshly grown, like really freshly grown, like you pick it yourself and you eat it as fresh as possible, there's going to be a lot more nutrients in those fruits and vegetables. But I'd say like 99% of the raw foodists out there uh, don't take that into account. They're just getting food as long as it's labeled raw. And I say we shouldn't call it the raw food diet anymore if we want to look at health. Because the raw food diet is not a healthy thing anymore. We should call it the fresh food diet. Because that's what health is all about, is eating food fresh. Even if it's cooked and fresh, it's still better than raw and not fresh. But when you're doing what John's doing, you're getting the food out of your own gardens or out of gardens that was freshly picked, then it's something different. And I do believe that's the food we should eat. You can see behind me right here, there's a garden that John helped me put in uh, that I try to get a good amount of my food. And whenever I go, I'm much better off going to the farmer's market than I am to the health food store. Much better off going to the health food store than a regular store. So it's the best you can do is what you want to do, but we have to be realistic. So if somebody out there does claim they're 100% raw, you know, you bring up the subject of integrity. And for me, you know, I want to test things out and I want people to be healthy. So I'm going to try something out before I, I let other people know about it to see if it's working or not. Uh, but I'm not going to lie about anything because I, I, want, I want to be honest with what I'm doing. If I tried eating cooked food and it didn't work, I would tell people it didn't work and this is why. If I tried adding animal products to my diet and it didn't work, I would tell people I tried it, it didn't work and this is why. But when you look back at research and I look at my own personal experience uh, and the majority of people out there, it does work if you do it the right way. I'm not an advocate of eating the factory farm animals. I'm not an advocate of eating the uh, animal products that you would buy in a basic store, the drugged up milk and everything else. But century, for centuries, people have been eating fermented uh, goat milk, raw goat milk and things like that. Uh, and it's been uh, very beneficial to the body. So, Well, I want to tell people, you know, don't feel like, oh, if I can't do it, 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 it at all, then I'm not going to, if I can't grow my own food, I'm not going to do raw foods at all. No, no, no. You know, the best, and we should strive for growing our own food like I'm teaching now. You know, as I constantly learn and evolve, I want to teach the best information that I have. And the best information is you want to grow your own mineral-rich food at your house to have the highest quality. If that's not possible for you, get the highest quality from the farmer's market. If the best you can do is whole foods, great. Whole foods produce is a lot better than buying canned and processed junk. So we want to do the best we can and, you know, not stress about it. And one of the things on, you know, about people in the raw food movement that claim they're 100% raw, you know, I always tell everybody to question authority or just, just question and be curious in life. You know, if something's, if you're trying something that's not working, maybe like Paul said, you need to change your approach and keep changing until you find something that works. You know, I've dialed in my diet after 15 years. I didn't just come up with this overnight. In the beginning, I ate lots of dehydrated foods until my dehydrator broke, and that was actually one of the best things that happened to me. And I started eating more fresh foods, and I didn't do that on purpose. It just happened because maybe higher power said, hey, your dehydrator is breaking today. And I ate more fresh foods, and I felt better. And you're going to go through experiences like that, too, where you're just going to learn by trying things. And those are the most valuable things you can learn, not what any of us tell us, but what you try and learn on your own. Maybe you try animal products, and they agree with you like Paul. I mean, I tried raw goat milk from my good friend who feeds us goats organically and high quality everything and he milked it and I had it and I got a mucus reaction so that told me my body wasn't necessarily agreeing with it maybe your body will maybe it won't I don't know try it and see you know but definitely what we want to do is a couple steps I'll sum it up and Paul could sum it up in a couple steps number one we want to you know eat as local as possible whenever possible it's not always possible and I do eat things from you know Asia and Thai coconuts and different things sometimes but the majority of our food should be local, freshly grown, freshly picked, and freshly eaten. And hopefully, you know, they're mostly plant-based foods. For me, you know, over 15 years, I started growing my own food, and now I'm growing the majority of my vegetables. And that's really important. Nobody talks about the quality of the food. They just say, oh, yeah, eat organic, or, you know, eat, just eat raw. But no, 
not all raw foods created equal. You know, some nutrients basically as the food is picked and even a couple days later, you know, some of the nutrients are decreased by 50%. So we want to be eating the highest quality food. So for me, that meant growing it myself. Nobody could do it better than me. We're not taught how to grow our own food in schools. I mean, isn't food, you know, one of our three basic needs? I mean, we should be taught how to grow our own food. It's really important and really empowering to grow your own food. That's absolutely number one. Grow your own food or at least learn how to determine if some wild foods are edible. So that if you're not doing it, nature's growing it for you. Better yet, pick those wild seeds and cultivate them in your yard and grow those wild foods, which are really powerful in compost and rock dust. So you'll have super wild foods, and I do just that. Another thing, Paul, that's really important is we want to be eating a variety of foods. I was at a farm yesterday, and they grow over 200 varieties of different things. And, you know, how much variety did you eat yesterday? Nature's wealth, good for you.